יזהר אשדוד, שלום. שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. Thank you, welcome to my studio. It's an honor and a pleasure. After, after all, Izar, in addition for being one of the most famous performers in Israel, thanks to Islam and much beyond, you are one of the busiest persons I know in the Israeli music industry. Forgive the name. You are responsible for the careers of so many talented uh, musicians. So being here in this studio, one can sense your contribution to Israeli music. Okay, thank you very much. You know, one is never aware, or um, I'm never, like you know, you talk about myself, I'm never aware of my own doings, and uh, when I get too busy, my family tells me that. Or culture buzz. <laughs> yes, okay. And it's a great pleasure. Okay. Isar, you were uh, born in Jerusalem. Right. And... Uh, You grew up in Israel, but you also grew up abroad, what, you call, what we call fondly a foreign ministry child. Or what, you know, the, the professional uh, jargon is a, is a foreign ministry brat, like okay. army brats, you know, <laughs> kids who grew up, uh, I grew up, yes, I grew up uh, half of my life uh, between the time I was born until the age of 18, I spent abroad, you know, we used to live, we, we had a home in Herzliya. And we used to fly for you know for trips of two or three years, and then until I went to the army at the age of eighteen, I spent half of my life there and when one listens to your music because you are a very talented Thank you very musician much. I'm glad you came today, you know my ego is uh any time <laughs> you can hear the effects. Of, 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 of my travels of your upbringing okay it's both Israeli but also contains so many influences and we are about to touch upon your fascination with Irish music but maybe before we do it when you think about your music do you believe that it was affected by your upbringing all over the world? Definitely, definitely. Um, our first trip was when I was six months old. Uh, we traveled to France to Paris and I lived there until the age of four. My father worked at the embassy in Paris and um, I know that the seeds of, of uh, my uh, musical influences were sown there uh, because of the music my parents listened to, classical music and uh, French chanson. And also Israeli music because, you know, Paris in, in the late 50s, early 60s was a mecca for Israeli uh, artists who went there, you know, all the Gesher Ayarkon and Amos Kenan. Yossi Banai. Yossi Banai. And many Israelis, many artists uh, were there but, and they were poor. And my parents were like, uh, they hosted many of them, you know, as they had a job. They worked at the embassy. So that was... They provided the home for the Israeli colony in Paris. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. And then we came back and we, when I was nine, we traveled again to Cambodia, which was a totally different culture, a totally different place. Also, French influence. But I think the major influence upon my music was uh, when we traveled, uh, the last time we traveled, we traveled to Greece for a year and then to Holland for two years. And there, you know, I was already fascinated with music. Music was already... My identity, I played music, guitar and, and I listened and that, that was all that mattered to me. So um, by then it was happening in real time at those places because Israel was pretty isolated back in, in, in the 70s. You know, we didn't have internet, uh, the television didn't broadcast much, much music. One channel. One channel. If you don't count our neighbors. <laughs> Which was, our neighbors TV was one of the only places where you could watch or listen to, to music from, from America and England. Right. And, uh, but I was there, I found myself at the age of 16 in, in Holland uh, and going to the concerts of my favorite bands and, and getting the new albums and, and playing music with friends and, and meeting friends from all over the world. You know, at my school, the American International School, we had people from America, from Africa. One of, one of my best friends played guitar with me was the son of the Saudi Arabian ambassador. Wow. Yes, and we're still in touch, by the way. Hey, yes, yeah. wonderful. And uh, so the influences were, were broad. Is that your first instrument? Was it the guitar? 
Yes. Not too many people know it. And I ask your permission to reveal it now, almost exclusively. You are a lefty. I'm a lefty. You needed a very particular guitar, almost what we call the reversed guitar. I'm not just a lefty. I'm a, a, a left-handed, upside-down <laughs> guitar player. I'll tell you, I'll explain. I'll, I'll take a guitar and Wonderful. I'll show. Hey. Go for it. We are awaiting Giza Rajdot uh, returning with his very unique guitar. Yeah. No, actually this is a regular guitar, but ah, okay. no, it's, it's special because it's a dobro, it's an American. But most people hold their guitar like this, okay? Okay. Right-handed people. Right. If you're left-handed, you can hold it like this, but what you usually do is you reverse the strings. Ah. So that the, 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 the top string is, is, is the heavy one and the bottom string is the light one. Okay. But what I did is, I was 12 years old, and I found an old guitar at home. I just picked it up and started strumming like this, and that, that's how I taught myself to play guitar. Hey. Left-handed, upside down. Amazing. Which is rare and strange. And, and even more th difficult. And very difficult, yes. But, <laughs> top, that's how I but when you are 12, the sky is the limit. Yeah, and, and by the time, you know, I met some teachers, and, and they tried to, to show me the correct way to play it was too late because I refused to play like this. <laughs> and that's the story of me being left-handed. Listen, lucky us. Uh, I know that in addition for enjoying huge success in Israeli standards with Tislam, okay. you are basically doing everything and anything. You have written music for films, Yes. If I'm not, not if I'm not wrong, you even made one appearance as an actor. That's right. Absolutely. You are a DJ. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. I was yeah, I was at the army radio station Galitza when I was in the army. Yeah. And you make your own clips, your own short films or <laughs> movies. I yeah. don't know how to yeah. describe them. I'm I'm a, an aspiring uh, film student. Okay. Yes. Your voice is often heard when it comes to the most important issues for Israel and its society. And lately, you have done something quite interesting. You went all the way to Dublin, Ireland, to perform there and revealed your great fascination and love to Irish music. Yes, it was a very uh, special trip to Dublin because, uh, just to give a background to our Please. viewers and listeners, um, I've, I've been fascinated, fascinated by Irish music for many years and on almost all of my albums, on each album there's a song which is influenced by Irish music and contains Irish instruments and because I found this this, the root of my melodies, not, not the style of my music or it's rock and roll, but the, the roots of my melodies and harmonies come from Celtic music. That's what I discovered. I don't know how my grandparents came from Poland, you know, so it doesn't have anything to do with my uh, genetics. But um, so I've more, I've incorporated Irish music into, into my music more and more. And in the past three, over three years, I've, I've made a, a major decision and, and made a, a whole stage show based around uh, the Irish sounds and my music and the combination of both. And uh, that special trip to Dublin was uh, inspired by, by you guys, um, especially Nuit in, uh, at the Israeli Embassy in Dublin. Nuit in Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and she, she thought it would be interesting to bring this strange uh, mix of Israeli and Irish music into Dublin. It's almost like Cold to Newcastle. <laughs> and um, and we went there and it was a very very special trip and that the concert was very special and it you know because we were worried we didn't know how how the Irish people would react to our dialect of of uh, Irish influenced Israeli music whatever you call it but uh, I guess you know music uh, transverses um, all barriers and, and all. Uh, definitions, you know. It doesn't matter what you call it. If it's good music, if people like it, then it works. And you came with great humility to Dublin to perform, and you were received yeah, fantastically well. It was great. And, and if I'm not wrong, 
soon we'll be able to watch a documentary? Definitely. We're working, we're, we're doing, uh, we're just beginning to edit uh, this film that we shot uh, in Dublin, which combined my, my old love for music and current love for music and my recently found uh, obsession and fascination with film. So I played and I shot and, and I did both. A renaissance great. man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the compliments today. Hey, come on. When you deserve it, we have no problem. It's even, it even comes natural to us. Izar, I wanted to ask you, and maybe you are the best person in Israel to be asked this question. Try me. You are responsible for the careers of so many young Israeli talents which means you are very deep in the scene of the Israeli music creation, popular okay. music. And you have worked with so many talents, inspiring them, maybe a bit inspired by them. Uh, always. Because it's a give and take uh, process, yeah. I'm uh, guessing. When you look at the Israeli musical scene, and you have this uh, perspective because you've been in this business, forgive the word, for quite a long time now. How would you describe it? The evolution, the progress made, the different tastes. Can you? I can try. Reflect on it? I can, I can try to reflect on it. You know, I'll start where, uh, in, in my youth, I was talking before about uh, the mid-70s when I lived in Holland, and, and Israel, as I was saying, was isolated in terms of popular music and, and rock music, and so many things have changed since then. You know, it, maybe Tislam, my band, was uh, partially responsible for that because we, we brought a new kind of energy into Israeli popular music. Um, I remember I was there. You were there? In the audience. Really? You were a kid? <laughs> and then um, things changed drastically over the 80s and 90s and a, a new generation, a young generation of, of musicians emerged and and you know MTV came to Israel and, and internet and, and it opened up channels two influences from all over the world, people are much more open, people are updated. But, on the other hand, although, you know, we, we have much, many more influences uh, from abroad, I think Israeli popular music was, um, was forged during this time and became an entity that, that is totally different from, from, from its influences. You know, it, it is influenced by, by rock music and Arabic music and, and whatever, but it, it is a new kind of music which is different, which is, you know, even Israeli rock is, is now a definition. You ask a, y a young musician, what do you play? What kind of rock do you play? I play Israeli rock. And um, so there's so much music going on today and so many talented people. It's not always easy uh, commercially. Um, uh, it's, not, it's, it's never easy to, to make a living from music anywhere. You know, ask an American musician, and ask an English musician. They'll all give you the same answer. The well-known concept of the struggling artist. Yes, you know, it's, but any profession, if you want to be good in that profession, you have to work hard and it takes time and you have to pay your dues, as they say. Maybe when we look upon the evolution of the Israeli musician, one of the aspects that really stands out is when it comes to the ability of Israeli musicians to make it abroad, outside of Israel. Uh, you look at uh, bands, groups like Balkan Beatbox, Yemen Blues, and others, especially in the jazz scene, but not only, world music, ethnic music. What was considered impossible 10, 20 years ago is now possible. I was lucky to, to be a part of, of the first, I think, major breakthrough of an Israeli artist with Ofa Haza when I produced uh, Imni Nalu and, right. and it was, and I think to, to this day it is the biggest success of an Israeli artist abroad in terms of record sales and, 
and and recognition, you know. And I, I traveled a lot with with the late Ofra back then, and I saw the reactions, and and it was amazing. And uh, we all, as, as Israeli musicians, we we always uh, had this uh, this uh, disability in in a way because our music is is in Hebrew. I mean, take an Irish musician or an English musician. It's easy for them to, to, to make a career anywhere because they sing in English. Even a Norwegian band would probably sing in English. But most Israeli artists sing in Hebrew. Um, sometimes in the Yemenite or in other languages. And uh, so it took a very... It takes... Um, a, some, you have to be very unique. You have to make a very unique sort of music to make it abroad. I mean, you cannot make uh, you know heavy metal as it is and make it abroad you have to to make this uh, very special variation of, of metal or hard rock music like Orphanland do or uh, what Balkan beatbox do is is that strange combination which is almost natural for us but if you're an American it's strange and and and, uh, and it, it's almost exotic when you know you combine Balkan music with the uh, Middle Eastern music and rock music and hip-hop and and so I think the, the Israeli artists who make it abroad are the ones who, who know to, uh, to make this uh, synthesis of, of the culture that we have here in the Middle East with, with the Western culture, Western music. What is known as a fusion, and fondly we describe it as confusion. <laughs> yeah, what they call world music, you know. It's a we spoke a bit about the past, about the present. What is next for what? What is next for Riza Rashdot? I don't know. You know, they 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 said the prophecy was given to fools. To fools. Um, I'm working on, but I I can tell you what I'm doing in the present. Please. Uh, in order to, uh, to for the future, uh, I'm working on a new album. My my first studio album in about six years. That's it's what a, I'm doing. It's now. about time, if I may say so. Thank you very much. I think so too. <laughs> And it took me some time. It took me some time to to uh, understand what I want and what sort of music I want to and what what I want to say. And uh, it's happening now. I'm in the finishing touches here in my studio of my new album. I hope I hope it will be released in the summer. And uh, I'm performing all over Israel, like I always do. And I study film. And I make little films, and we're working on the documentary, which I hope will be the first uh, full-length film that I will do. A wonderful. And really wonderful. I have a family, and you know, that's what I do. Izar, what can I say? Wish you all the best. Thank you very all much. All the success in the world. And thank you. Thank you. For your huge contribution. Thank you Israeli very much. And, and you guys, thank you for what you're doing for Israeli music. Keep it up. Toda Roma. Shalom.